Yeah, hello everyone. Um, I hope you can see and hear me. Uh, yeah, that's me. So uh, sometimes, if if you hear some, if you read uh, Nordic Godojo saying some stuff, it's probably going to be uh, Auntie during the lecture. But until now, it was me. So Auntie sometimes drops in and uh, does some commentary, I suppose. Long time no see. Hmm. I mean, I guess. Um, it's been a while since uh, Nordic Go Dojo lectures were happening, but we also did the Toradal tournament over Christmas, so... Yeah, so welcome to everyone who's here. I see Godave in the chat and um, Marcel... Um, Chris F01 was here earlier. Um, Telio, welcome everyone who's early. Um, yeah, so th this lecture topic that... Um, I've, you know, I found is, it's kind of been on my mind for a while because it happened that several of my private students had a little bit of an issue um, evaluating territory objectively. And I, I hope it's something that happens to a lot of people. So, or I think it is something that happens to a lot of people and I hope I can be a bit helpful. And I just wanted to start the lecture off by checking some examples of what I think we're talking about and then developing the topic a little bit further. Um, and like that, I can also maybe tell a story about how, how I realize this is a problem or like the examples that caught my attention to this being a problem. And the first example is very simple. Um, actually very simple. And, um, this is a game that a student of mine played. He's, I think, 3Q on, on KGS, I think? Yeah. And he just, you know, he plays games on KGS. And this is an actual game of his, right? Um, I believe he's playing white. So everything normal so far, right? And um, then Black played a little bit of a strange move. Uh, Black played this Hane. And, and then connected. Uh, so instead of tenukiing, which would usually be the normal move, or I mean, I guess in the modern AI times, someone might be doing B8, um, right? Um, but black chose to hane and connect, right? Uh, for reference, again, KGS 3Q level. Oh, hello world, anti here. Yeah, print hello world, indeed. Um, yeah, hello, Auntie. Nice that you're on on your <clears throat> on your own account because then we're not confused as to who Nordic Godojo is. Um, and nice of you to join. So this move conventionally is considered a little bit slow. So it does prevent White's invasion, right? I mean, I'm sure a lot of you have been annoyed um, by by a Sun Sun invasion that just takes all your points. Maybe some of you have seen this kind of uh, Joseki before. And then White needs to decide if he wants to take Gote or not. Um, but yeah. Um, hello from the Sun Origin country. Oh, collecting ideas from my next book. Yeah, actually, when, when, I told, when I told Auntie the lecture topic, Auntie mentioned that this sounds like the topic for my next book. Um, so I figured I should read his book sometime. Um, in any case, I think a lot of you have seen this, this type of invasion, right? And maybe some of you are annoyed by it, right? And the point, like the striking thing about this Hane is that when I had a lesson with my student, he said, I hate this. I hate it when they play B6, you know, I really, really hate it. And I was like, okay, why do you hate it? Why do you hate your opponent giving you Santa so much to play on the second line on move 11, right? And he said, well, after black connects, I can never invade. So black has so many points and later black's going to play here and I'm going to lose all my points. So that was his logic for hating it. And also he mentioned, and, and this is, this is true because I, I look at a lot, I, I, I stalk my students. I, I look at, uh, um, I, I look at 
you know, a lot of your games, more than you think. And his opponents kick a lot. They play this kick and then Hane connect a lot. And actually, he told me that he started playing it himself because he hates playing against it so much. So apparently, at the KGS 3Q le level, there's a little bit of an, you know, um, the the play is infested by early B like early B6 moves. Um, so that yeah, that's interesting. And oh, since white is too strong on the left side, would black still still block at B5? Uh oh. Um, oh, that's an interesting question. Would black block at b5? Uh, oh, oops. so... That's... So let's say the black tanukis, like, plays here, and then we, we invade. Yeah, you can definitely do this and just try to keep the points, right? But the point is, you're not keeping that much territory anymore. So a lot of people will often play this move, and... White is, by white is strong on the outside, I assume that you mean that white has this stone, right? But this stone is, you know, it does help white. Uh, it prevents black from, you know, ever pincering here. But it doesn't mean black strength isn't useful for other stuff. Um, maybe makes it a little bit worse to, to block at b5, but it doesn't make it bad. On the other hand, you can always play d3. So... Yeah, can we stick to the topic? Well, um, oh, there's there's a lot of people chatting. chatting. Uh, can we stick to the topic? Maybe. How to use a wall? Well, how to use a wall, that's kind of related. Um, it, yeah, it, it, it's kind of related because I wonder how many of you think that this wall is useful for black after white plays these two moves right um because something that a lot of people do is that they're very focused on direction of play um i have i have a, a student who's about kgs 1q who told me um you know if i'm white and i invade sansan right I'm always going to play here, and, you know, I'd feel terrible if I invaded Sansan, and, you know, well, my opponent already had a stone here. Um, well, here, and ne I'd never invade Sansan here, because my opponent gets the type of direction of play he wants. And, and my student has a point, right? My student has a point. Um, and this is kind of related to the lecture, because I think a lot of people have trouble finding use for influence when the use isn't obvious. Or, okay, influence is the wrong word. Finding use for good shape when the use isn't obvious. Um, at Marcel, note that black is already gaining influence towards the bottom right. Yeah. Um, where you would only do this now and not even here, probably. Yeah, yeah, it's opposite to old thinking. Yeah. Old thinking has kind of been, uh, I mean, it, at least in terms of Sansan, it's been kind of revolutionized. Um, okay, this is the first observation I wanted to, to, to bring to mind. That apparently at the 3Q level, people love playing B6 and B5 connection, and people hate playing against it. Um, even though I think objectively it would be considered slow. Like, you know, I, you don't see this in stronger players' games until later in the game. Um, so let's, let's go to the next example, um, which is already a, li a little, and by little I mean a lot more nuanced, I suppose, um, from another student's game. Um, so this game... Yeah, the critical move is... is this invasion. And, you know, up until this point in the game, my student had, like, this running group, right? Um, so it's like, uh, you know, these guys. And, and he was like, well, actually, I'm still a little bit concerned that they're going to get attacked, right? 
and you know i was maybe a bit concerned what if white plays here and i still have to do something right um and you know that's that's a concern that you need to keep during a middle game but apparently things switched up a little bit when white played here um and First of all, I'll show you my student's answer, and then I'll go through what we discussed in our lesson a little bit. Um, so my student played Q3, which is an unknown move. You don't walk into a fully split Kama like this, like ever, usually, because it's just not a very optimal shape. You're not really supposed to do this. So uh, for reference, imagine black played here. Um, Like, you know, the, the, what you would usually do is something like this. Th this, is, this would be normal, um, like the normal response. So this is a little, this, I mean, this is, this is playing the right sequence, but then playing here and letting white do this anyway, instead of blocking from the top. So shape-wise, it's not the right move, right? It, it's very clear that shape-wise, this move isn't the right move. However, there's a reason for playing it, and my, my student has a legitimate reason, right? Um, oh, hello, browser. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> this is good, Dave, yeah. Oh, hello, hello Flutter Mouse. Um, oh, yeah, uptime is like 17 minutes. Oh, yeah, I mean, th the lecture's been live for like 10 minutes, yeah. Um... How much of the lecture did I miss? Not much. Yeah, we just started. I haven't even really introduced the topic. Right now, I'm just going through some examples of positions that made me think of this topic. Um, and, okay. Um, yeah, you missed one example. This, and I've just started on this example. So you're kind of in time. Um, okay. So my, my student played Q3, right? And when I asked him about this move, he mentioned that he really didn't like p3 because he didn't want to lose his corner. Like, in his mind, you know, he's already played this move to make points with the corner, this move to play points with the corner, you know? And, and when white plays here, it's like, oh no, my, my corner, you know? My corner is gone, right? And, you know, he's right. I mean, this is annoying, right? I think you, you people would also be annoyed if white were to go for this, you know? And like, oh, where did my cash go? You know, you people were already probably counting 20 points for white. Uh, sorry, for black. And then suddenly white just lives in there, right? Um, so, so you, you know, I think a lot of people would dislike that. And my student also disliked that. So he played here. And the idea of this move was that he really wanted to get a connection on the second line, which he eventually achieved. So he, he kept his points, right? So he kept these guys. Now, we're not going to consider, or actually, no, we should consider the fact that after white gets this Atari, black loses most of the corner anyway and gave away the right side. Um, so black's choice was certainly not optimal. Um, but it's just an interesting phenomenon to me that when black was losing his corner, he went very single-mindedly towards keeping the corner, right? Like, I mean, if you remove O4, right? Q3 is the type of move you play to try to keep the corner, right? Um, um, this almost feels like we're about to judge the value of influence. Um, kind of. Actually, more than to judge, the point with judging the value of influence is that it's hard. Like, when you judge the value of points, you just count them. I have these many points, right? And, and this is actually, this is where I come to the, the part of the lecture where I kind of explain my, uh, my lecture topic. As my student mentioned, he, he said, I thought that if I play this, right, I get lots of influence, right? And keep in, keep in mind that this student of mine, he is not, you know, such a territorial player. He often plays for 
for Moyo, he sometimes plays fighting games. He's not like, you know, there's some people that really, really like territory. He's not necessarily one of them. Uh, he's fine playing for things other than territory. But as he mentioned, he really didn't like this position for black because he didn't know how he's going to use his influence. So he was thinking, well, look at all these strong stones. I mean, how am I going to use them in this position? It's really, really hard, right? Um, and, and he has a point, right? Like, it's not clear. Like, if he had this position and, like, let's go back and give black a position where, where this wall is easy to use. Let's, let's do this. And uh, let's do this, this, this. And now white invading here, you know, would probably be crazy, right? Because you're going to... Let's, let's make it exactly like in the game. White invading here would really be too early because these corner points are really small at this stage of the game. And you actually have to add another move to avoid uh, a ko. Um, so if you really want to live, you'd have to add another move. But then Black's direction of play is just great. Black stones are all working together. Black has a really big initiative, right? Um, so I don't think my student would mind playing this position. However, uh, when it comes to this position, he doesn't see the immediate use for the wall, right? And I think that's a lot of... Um, that's much of the problem when people play Go. Territory can be counted, and what I'm going to call good shape can't. Um, and I say good shape instead of influence for a reason, which is that, uh, you know, before you get influence, you need good shape, right? So shape comes first, and then you make influence with your good shape, right? Often, often the shapes that you make, if your shapes are good, if you make shapes like, I don't know, um, uh, this, you know, this, um, oh, oops, no, um, if you have this kind of strong shape on the outside, and this kind of wall stuff, right, eventually it usually turns into something useful, right, um, but the problem with that is, eventually it will turn into something useful, right? Like influence, like, you know, you will start a fight and suddenly you will be favored in the fight. You will have certain advantages uh, in the fight that you wouldn't usually have, right? Uh, good shape and it eventually turns into something that you can use to your advantage uh, in ways that maybe aren't obvious at the beginning of the game, right? And I'm particularly good, or should I say bad at this, because I have an inord as a player, I have an inordinate amount of faith in the intangible, right? I love influence. I, I really, really like playing for positions where my own profit is unclear, but I still have faith in that there's profit. It's just long-term profit that isn't obvious. And in that sense, I'm a bit of a strange player. I think most people really like the secure, tangible territory, right? Um, whereas I like the fact that I control the game for, like, I control the board for the rest of the game if white plays something like this. Um, now, in this position, it's true that white has certainly a, a reason to invade, right? This influence is harder to use than most influence, right? Um, because there's not such an obvious, um, not such an obvious way you can make points with it, make a big area. Nevertheless, I would very much ask the chat, what advantages do you think Black got out of this invasion, right? What did we get? So what we lost, if White takes Gote to live and doesn't play the Ko, right, which is a different uh, question, um, what would Black get and what would Black lose? And, and let's try to weigh those uh, factors with each other. Yeah, I can very much understand this problem. Yeah, Godave, I thought this kind of problem might be somewhat up your alley to an extent. Um, the lecture I've been waiting for. Nice. Territory is number one in my book, six Tangjie. Hello. R14 is inherently weaker. Um, G8 Cutting Stone is 
more or less available to use. Um, G, G8, 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 uh, oh, G8, wow, you, wow, you, you're look, you're, uh, G6, I see. Um, yeah, so, I mean, G6 is hard to use, though. Um, like, G6 is still hard to use. But, I mean, when black plays here, white's gonna have to play here. So that's invisible profit that black's getting, because black is generally stronger. Um, K9 cutting, uh, like, K9 group is stronger. Yeah, center group will basically never be in trouble. Oh, go, 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 go off 10, Anti has some interesting points. When politicians, soldiers, and merchants wage war, who wins? I'm just thinking that if you have superior, Im you're having superior influence doesn't mean that you control the game. Uh, it doesn't mean that you control the game, but it means that you have more left to win in the remaining game, even if you start off with less, uh, with less money. But yes, I I, I see what you mean. Um, maybe R12 or R11. Black gods, yeah, yeah. Santa is a big one that some people have missed, right? Um. It can be that the opponent's territory cash is forcing your hand, yeah. So... Or that you're more like a biker in a triathlon, I see. But yeah, yeah, so people hit on some interesting points, right? White's invasion has done lots of things. So first of all, my student had already expressed some concern about his running group in the center, right? Now that black is so much stronger on the outside, it's much harder for Black's group on the outside to be attacked, right? These guys, you know, it's not like they were super weak before, but now they, they're not weak at all. I mean, it's impossible. Um, it's, you know, one would not expect it, this thing to get attacked anymore. Um, I can think of, well, first of all, it has an extremely easy connection. Let's say White ever gets a move to, to cut it. Black has a lot more fighting options now. So I'm thinking about moves like, N6, which would previously have been crazy. But, um, point being, Black gets some help towards his group. And maybe something else that Black gets is that it's a little bit easier for Black to play J3. That isn't too important. Um, the other thing that someone mentioned, Black got Sente, at least, right? That That's kind of important. Um, this game... I've been looking at this vital point for a very long time um, because this hits the, the problem that white has at C18. And I figured that if black plays this, white might have to be inordinately submissive. So something like maybe E18 to make sure that this uh, cutting point doesn't become such a problem. Well, cutting point, this peep. Except black still can do something like this, and is white going to play here now? Me, I mean, wh white has a serious shape problem. So there's actually a very big tanuki on the board. And in my opinion, the profit you get from f17 in comparison to, you know, white having originally played here is arguably bigger, it just in cash value. So there's a big tanuki on the board, and black got to tanuki. Now, in my opinion... The more interesting question for white would be, what if now I tenuki, I play the big point, and now what happens is that there's this co-open on the board, so I may or may not have taken your corner in exchange for some intangible profit, but I, I, I didn't give away Sente. Um, I assume my opponent would tenuki. Ah. You asked for the advantages we delivered, I cry. I see. <laughs> well, I, I think this would be more correct for white to just tenuki and then leave the co-option on the board. Um, and th that would be much more challenging. In fact, I had a game recently against um, um, against uh, Victor Lin, right, who's another teacher at the Nordic Gotojo, and we had this shape on an almost empty board. And, you know, White was willing, you know, Victor was willing to play all of these exchanges, except then he tenukied. So it's it's a way of like ensuring that I have life in the corner if I want it, but I'm not going to spend a move. 
Now, there's a lot of drawbacks to living in this way in the corner, because you do make black much stronger on the outside, but at least you don't lose Sente, right? Um, I also assume by a Tanuki by white and losing Sente. Well, you didn't have Sente in the first place, right? Um, if we look at this sequence, it's... Um, where are you? Okay, there you are. If, if we look at this sequence, you know, white could have tanuki in the first place. So you, you have to weigh these exchanges against each other, right? Uh, so white may or may not have taken all your cash, but white also made a degree of payment, right? Um, so it's, it's an interesting dynamic. This, I, I don't want to call this for either player. Um, but this does bring me to the topic at hand. My student was like, I don't want to lose my corner. Right? And this is a little bit like saying, I don't want to lose my apartment. Right? And, and like, you get offered a mansion, but you're like, but I don't want to lose my apartment. You know? That, that's what it felt like to me. Um, because in my mind, if white takes Gote here for, for a corner that, you know, is actually not very big, um, for like, you know, kind of a big sente move. Black isn't doing so bad. Mm. <laughs> uh, Mike seems like it's peaking a little. Oh, maybe I should, maybe I should actually turn it down a little bit. Um. Wait, why do I have gain on this microphone? This microphone shouldn't have gain. I hope this is better. Um, yeah. Um, sorry, sorry for that. It, actually, the mic settings were wrong uh, for some strange reason. But oh well. Um, so yeah, the point is that you don't um, you don't necessarily know what you're getting here when you lose your corner, because all of these are intangibles. It's like oh, it's harder for your group to get attacked. It's easier to play J3. You get Sente, and Sente has a very intangible value as well. So I think people really, really like keeping their points, right? Um, but it's still extremely hard for me to evaluate, well, what you're just saying. Yeah, and this is why it's hard for people, right? Uh, it's really hard for people to evaluate something that you that is hard to count, right? And and that's, that's difficult, right? It's, it's very difficult to evaluate things that aren't points, right? And that's why people like points very much. I mean, uh, this, this doesn't just happen at the... Uh, like, this really doesn't just happen at lower levels. Strong players really like points as well, you know? Okay, maybe a strong player isn't going to see this and be like, oh, my game is falling apart, right? Or like the position is bad for me, um, but they might still play this as white. Though I actually don't believe they play this as white because f seventeen is really big. Now, something I commented to my student is that, um, let's say that the game were like let's just put a random position where both players have played some random you know filler moves that bring the game closer to end game, right? Just random stuff. Now, P3 is a very, very different proposition. Um, so with the first example, is that also bad keeping points? Yes, yes. Uh, the first example was basically, uh, for those of you who weren't there, it was black, hunted, and connected on the, on the second line at move. Uh, uh, you know, 11 and took Gote for it. Yes, that's a bad way of keeping points. Um, because the point is, White's invasion later doesn't take that many points and also get, makes Black stronger on the outside. So it's not like Black loses that much. You don't lose that much that you're willing to take Gote like this on the second line at move 11. But okay, back to, back to the other position. I'd ask, for example, why P3 now is a very, very different uh, proposition to what it was before. Um, I find I end up with, 
influence a bunch um, and win with it because I'm not sure how to evaluate territory either. <laughs> I see. So the secret, the secret to not valuing points too much is to not learn how to count. Yeah, solid. I don't play four four, so I never have that problem. I see. Hmm. Um. So I think. Um, this move, right, as, as I, this I mentioned to my student, I, I put a similar position on the board, added like random filler moves. And what I mentioned was that, oh, p3 is now much more scary if it lives. And the reason it's much more scary is that the value of sente has extremely decreased. There's not a shining vital point like f17 on the board anymore. So if this happens, right, then, you know, black does have good shape. Black did make something on the outside. But as my student correctly pointed out, this outside is actually not worth that much in this game. It's worth something, but it's not worth that much. Um, and then probably white would be justified to live in this corner, even in Gote at this stage. So if, if we add, like, moves, if, if, like, the value of territory keeps going up and up as, as the game kind of progresses, usually. Um, because the value of other things goes down. <laughs> I only do 3-4, even 3-3 or 5-3, and big invadable enclosures, so I guess I almost never do 4-4 four, four either. P3 is something I do to go for a kill. Ah, because I want to kill this weak group, I guess, or something crazy like that. Um, okay, I think um, this is maybe... Um, as far as I wanted to go with this particular example. And it's not an easy example, right? Because we're losing, we're losing a, a, a big corner, right? And in this case, I think it's maybe even harder for people to judge this position because, you know, people often don't think about Sente as much as, as they should. And Sente is not, you know, uh, and also Senta is very dependent on the, you know, the value of the next move. It's very dependent on the stage of the game. So it's, it's a very hard factor to evaluate. And I would say that it's, yeah, I don't know. It's not an easy position. And I don't think White's invasion, for example, is totally unjustified. I don't think it's correct, but I don't think it's terrible either. I think you can judge this position solely based on who gets sent it. That's maybe a bit much, but... What might be a good reaction late in the game for a black? Um, so if we look at this position... Honestly, I think black shouldn't do anything crazy. I, and my guess is that you should just let white live and take sent it, honestly. Um, so... I, I just don't see something better. I mean, what are you going to do? I, you know, I think if you play this move, white's still going to play o3 and live somehow. So the point is, there's there's not a um, not a clear way to kill this type of invasion. I think, um, though maybe there's some crazy way to try to kill it, but I don't I I don't think there should be. And as far as I can tell, the best thing you can do is is just let this happen and take Sente, Right after all, this is actually not so bad for. Um, for black. So you do get Sente, which is worth something, and there's actually other intangibles that are worth something. For example, previously S7 was white's Sente endgame, now S8 is black's Sente endgame. This is the kind of detail that spills over when you're stronger on the outside. Um, so I don't think black lost that many points, end of the day. Uh, black can try the 3-3. The 3-3, wow. Uh, oh, Godeo has to go. Yeah, uh, thanks for watching. See you later. Um, but okay, I, I think this is most of what I want to see for, for this example. I want to reiterate, I don't think that white, white's invasion is strictly speaking bad. Even in the game, I don't think it's terrible because territory is worth a lot, right? Uh, something being tangible does make it attractive. What I do think, what I really want to stress is that Black's answer here 
isn't the right thing to do. Because un under the guise of keeping territory, Black wrecked his own shape here. Like, Black's shape is, is really, really terrible here. And, you know, he, he wanted to keep points, which is understandable. But when you're making this type of shape, you need to reconsider a little bit what your, your, what your priorities here are, let's say. So, I would, I would perhaps suggest that even when it's not clear why making good shape is important, it's often worth it. Right, even you know this. This is a good exchange territorially for Black. You kept these. You kept these points, right? But it doesn't mean it's a good move, uh, because Black's shape is just really bad, and that will spill over into points eventually, even if it's not immediately clear how. Okay, fair. So an answer could also be that if it's this painful, Black should have handled this corner earlier. Yeah, yeah. Black Black might have already handled this corner. Like at this stage of the game, Black can very seriously consider. Um trying to somehow prevent white from going in here. Um, or read out a way to kill it if white does go in here. So I, yeah, th that could be done. Okay. Um, so let's, let's move on to my next example. Wait, which one is it? Um, okay, so the next few examples are actually from my own games, right? Um, looking at these moves, Black seems like a really small guy, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I was very confused until I saw who made the comment. Um, okay. So, this next game is actually, um, oh wait, or I could do this example. Actually, hmm, I'm a example should I do? This one's interesting as well. Okay, this one's an easier one. Okay. This one's an easier one, and I actually have a question for you guys. So, um, this is actually from a lesson I had with a student a while ago. My student is, for reference, maybe like 6Q on OGS, around, around that, um, that mark. Okay. So, you know, there's some game on the board, and white invades black's corner, right? Um, oh no, oh no, on the spot question. Yeah, well, I mean, none of, none of you particularly has to answer. I'm just expecting that maybe one or two of you would like to chip in. So, okay. Um, for, I mean, first of all, I ask, I'd ask the chat, what would you answer to this move? R14, because white's obviously trying to invade black's corner and is trying to make something in the corner, right? You're trying, it's essentially a reduction. Um, Q14, so we say Q14. Um, R15, someone says. Okay, so two people for kick and one person for Q14. Let's look at, uh, at R R15. So we play R15. And then probably white's going to play here, right? Or, or you know, here. I, I guess either move is fine. Uh, and then I guess that most of you want to play here, right? And just be like, okay, I'm holding the position down, I'm keeping my points mostly, right? Um, okay, first instinct would be clamp as well. Wow, lots of people want to clamp. So we're just trying to keep our points. Like, let's say that white plays here, and, you know, white plays, uh, well, probably white's going to do this and this. Well, we still kept most of our points, right? Maybe this and this, and then if we're really scared, we can even Hane. Because, I mean, it is pretty late in endgame. We want to keep this. Though, on the other hand, maybe Black could still go for something interesting on the top side. So, you know, maybe it's too small to play T15, but... Um, I didn't count the board, so you know first reaction is the kick. I see. Um, oh, hello, Elfoto. Welcome. Um... Okay. My student also played R15. Right? But maybe the next move will will be interesting to you people. Um and considering L15 but probably would be Q14 in the game. Ah, I see. Uh L15. I think you mean R15 probably, but Q14. 
Two fourteen in the game. I see. Well, let's let's just follow the the logic of the person at hand. So, you know, Q fourteen is a move, right? Um, maybe you could consider. Ah, it's hard to find the next move for Black. I'm not sure what you were considering. So let's say that Black tries to block. Then White can at least kind of honey his way out. So it's kind of similar to if you clamp. White reduces your corner and White gets out. And if you try to sort of enclose from, from the outside, I don't think White is going to have the hardest time making life here. Um, so probably, probably White will be doing quite well. And, you know, we've talked about the value of the outside. In this game, the value of the outside is very low because it's hard for white to make. Sorry, it's hard to, for black to do anything with his wall. Now, that doesn't mean the wall isn't valuable at all, but it does mean that probably you want to keep the corner if you can. Um, now, black's next move might surprise you. The so black played S15. Um, and when I had my lesson with, with him, his language, right, was, okay, I'm scared that white is going to cut here. <laughs> Miyoshu, yeah. Uh, I'm scared that white's going to cut here and then use the Aji to live inside. So he was thinking, um, he was thinking, um, I forget the exact variation. I mean, it's not that clear if white can live, but let's assume for a second that white can live. And actually, um... Oh, I would give up one stone for Sente. Yeah, this is very reasonable because you actually still have a lot of end game, so white didn't make that much. And white was already strong, so he's over-concentrated, and maybe next black can do something interesting like invade the top. So that's a whole other can of worms. Um... So, he was scared that white will live in here. And, and the sequence he gave me, he actually cut on this side for white. And he's like, oh, I have to take because it's the side that white cut on. And then what if white plays like here? And then like, you know, he, he gave some sequence like this. And I'm not, I don't want to analyze too much the validity of the sequence. Because I actually don't think it's that easy for white to live here. That's aside the point. My, my student's language was, I was kind of scared that white lives in here so my solution my solution was to play s15 right and i'd maybe um i'd maybe advance my question to chat to ex like try to ex like explain why this reasoning isn't maybe forthcoming right um because I i'd say that most of us would kind of quail at the idea of playing S15 just from a shape perspective. But more, more concretely, why, why is the corner less valuable than what white gave to achieve the corner in this particular situation? It's a valid solution to his problem. However, he didn't back it up with his reading. Um, um, I, I'm not actually sure I agree with that. Um, because... Actually, reading is aside the point. If white really wants to, white can live in here, I think. So I can think of, um, you know, I can think of, you know, this, this shape is actually kind of alive. Because, for example, we can do this, 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 and then um, this. And okay, this shape, black can make a co for it, but this type of co is actually very destructive to black's own shape. So... Um, you know, if black ever loses this co, um, you know, let's make a random threat. Then, okay, this is a very big threat of black's own. Um, but often black will find that black has shape problems of his own once he loses this co. I guess in this case, the shape problems are mitigated because you can kind of get away with capturing either this or this. But in any case, it is a heavy co for black. You know, you're giving away two ponukis, lots of endgame follow-up. So very often what you will see is that black just tenukis here and thinks about things later. And often black doesn't go for the ko at all. 
So white can sort of live in here. Uh, it's not objective. <laughs> yeah, of course it's not objective, but why? I mean, nobody's objective. So white can live in here, right? Um, but that's, that's actually not the point, right? The point is, let's consider something like this, right? And why is this sequence, I mean, absolutely terrible for white in a lot of ways? Um, com in comparison to black playing S15. What, if white gets corner, she loses potential on right on top. Yeah, well, that, that's kind of the, the, the short story, right? Um, the point is that black has a lot of added profit that my student maybe didn't consider. Like, my student was thinking, oh no, my corner, right? Um, white can make more points um, on the top right with S14. Um, with S14. After S15. Yeah, that's, an, that's another thing that maybe wasn't considered. First is losing Sante, top left is more invadable. Yeah, so lots of good ideas, right? When white, and, and I'm picking sort of an easy example because I think most of you would play S14. S15 is, is probably not, you know, it's a move that maybe most of us would not, um, um, would not play. Actually, I think S14 directly is correct, Ninja. I think S14 is really, really big here. So the first thing that my student maybe didn't consider is, okay, let's look at what I got, right? And, and this is like approx 13 points that black kept, right? And now let's consider that white actually got almost 10 points on the right side already, right? Like, all of these points, in the variation where white lived in this corner, white didn't get any of these. Because if we go and look at, at this... Uh, let's not play the call. Um, and let's do something like this. White already lost all of those points. And white, okay, white got like a 5-point corner, or at, at most. It's actually a little bit less, but white got a 5-point corner. So white butchered 20 of black's points in the corner, but white already lost 10 on the outside as a result of black's power on the outside. Black has, is, you know, gonna capture this stone anytime he likes, these extra points, that black's getting compensation, and, you know, potentially these two stones later. And as, as was mentioned by some people as well, black also gets sente, right? And also black's strength on the outside this is maybe, again, one of those situations where it's kind of hard to see the immediate use for black influence, but I think it's actually far from useless. So, for example, this top side of white could become points, or it might not become points. And in my mind, the type of thing you could, you could consider as black is actually this invasion. Um, and the, the plan is maybe we peep here, and then we attach here. And then, like, the dream scenario is, like, we live this way, kind of thing. Um, and this is actually enabled by black being stronger on the other side of the board, because now white has no punishment against the corner, um, if you will. And, you know, the whole point is that the dynamic of power when black gets such a ponuki shape on the outside and so many sente moves, so white lives in the corner, Black gets to exploit this all over the board in ways that aren't necessarily immediately obvious, right? Or at least weren't necessarily immediately obvious to an OGS6 cube, right? Um, and, that's, and that's why I thought this was an interesting situation um, where just making the right shape was much, much more important than keeping points, right? Um, because maybe on the face of it, S15 is actually a little bit better for points if we grant the given that white can live in the corner, which I think white can. But it's bad for everything else, and the spillover effect is actually pretty big. Um, so in general, uh, even, even at this relatively late stage in the game, making good shapes with your groups is often preferable to making points. Like... Points is one way that you make profit and go, but good shape is, a, a, let's say, a transferable currency. 
it will turn into lots of things later, and you have a lot of choices on how you use this like this like coupon, right? Um, good shape or having better shape than your opponent. So, for example, in this situation, having really strong shape on the outside um, and having um, a um, this ponuki and stuff, it's like it's a little bit like a coupon that you can use to turn into points to turn into profit later in the game. And the problem is that you have so much choice on how to use this that people don't quite know how to. Um, I was also thinking about L15 or something similar, but let's see. Uh, but I see. Ah, uh, uh, L15 is a little bit tame here. L15 is what you would do if you weren't strong. So, L, you know, the dif being strong and not being strong, it's the difference between invading and reducing here. Um, ah, instead of S14. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Um, probably in my mind, um, S14 is just such a vital point here because basically after white plays it, he gets like really good shape with his group. And basically, um, you know, Blackstone here is cut in a fully split Kema. So shape wise, S14 is such a shape point that I'd take it over. Um, yeah. Um, so he's deck hat. Well, you have a second channel. I don't have a second channel. This, uh, some people were asking if, uh, if yes, Psych, uh, Psych, Psycho asked, is this a real club or just the name of the channel? Uh, Nordic Godojo is, we're an online go school, basically. So I'm one of the teachers. And we do lectures here every two weeks on Saturday. So if you want to watch, we're here. And yeah, also some, but thank you, Yakago, for linking the website. So, yeah. Um... There's some interesting articles there and stuff if you want to read them. And also, we're, we're a ghost school, so. Um, my thinking that capturing the two stones was not immediately useful for black. Um, well, it's not like we're capturing them. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that the point is to capture them. The two stones, I think. Um, it's, the point is that these stones don't have a use anymore. Like, these stones are either going to get captured by black and become a liability, or do nothing, right? Or, if white plays this, black stone is becoming nearly a liability, right? And also, the other point about this is that this vital point is a power line between white making a lot of points, or black taking all of the points. So it's just such a vital point for both shape and points. Um... What kind of school? A go school? Like a kind of school I can join? Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, it's like a subscription service, I guess. And like for you basically subscribe for a couple of months and you'll get like, we pair you with other uh, people that, you know, we pair you in leagues with other people that are in the school, right? And you can play slow games, you know, against serious opponents uh, because everyone wants to learn. And then teachers like me do text reviews of the games. So, um, the two stones will be sushi, we will eat them raw without needing any preparation. <laughs> Not for free, unfortunately, we teachers need to eat too. Yeah, 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 I mean, it, it, it is a subscription service, so it, it is not free. On the other hand, I would call it affordable, so you, you can go check out what the offers are on the website. Um, main teacher and organizer here. Yeah, that's Anti Tormanen, he's, uh... He's, he's my boss, I guess. Um, yeah, okay, so back to the lecture topic. Um, yeah, so this example was a little bit of an easier one that maybe I thought um, would, would be interesting. The next example I have is... Well, I have a few examples from my own games, let's say. Uh, which I find kind of funny because it shows kind of my development as a player. So one of them is from a game I played in early 2018 where I made some really questionable decisions in my opinion. And another one is a game I played uh, last year in 2020 where I think I played much better. And it deals with this topic. Uh, I'm a strong supporter of food for teachers. As a teacher, I approve. Um, if we could eat the stones we capture, how good would that be? Would be cool, yeah. Um, or maybe not. Okay, so 
let's let's go and look at this game. So, um, oh wow, I was such a different player back then. Oh wow, what I did was crazy. So, okay, so we get to this position. Up until now, I mean, we've played some random stuff, like jumping into the center. I'm black, by the way, in this game. And during this game, I was thinking, I'd really, 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 really like to cut these two stones. That's what I was thinking. I mean, now what I would do is like, I don't know, play here or some other random big move and not lose time on my clock. Or like I'd play here, or you know I just play some big move. But in in this game I was like I'd really 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 like to cut these two stones. Um, I was five done at the time for context, and my opponent is six done. And I spent like ten minutes reading out of the one hour I have, and I played this move, um, which I wouldn't even think of now. Um, and, okay, my opponent played, answered with Hane. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, and then I attacked here. And, like, in my mind, I'm, like, doing some, like, five-head genius reading sequence where I'm cutting these two stones. And what happened was that I cut here. And eventually, I ended up cutting the two stones. Right? Uh, absolute five head. Eh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so I ended up cutting the two stones. Yeah, fancy. It looks fancy, doesn't it? So, I, I mean, this is insane what I did. It's insane. Um, insane in the bad way. So I, I cut the two stones, and I was so happy! Right? But you did what you wanted to do better than what I can say about my games. I guess, but... Okay. I, I looked at this position and I was like, yes, I got the two stones. Look at how many points I have. Like, I counted this and I was like, so much money, right? So much extra money I just made. It's like 12 extra points. 12 extra points is pretty good, right? Um, and I thought I'm better here, right? Um, and later in the game, I like there were some, some fighting and I got some bad results in the fights and I ended up losing. And also I got into time pressure because I spent 20 minutes reading how to cut this thing off. 30 big points, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Um, so back in the day, whenever I finished the game, I'd immediately check the computer. So this game, I finished it, right? And I go, go, over, go over to my computer and I tell it, yo, how was this game? And it says, white has 75% here. Like, white's much better. And I was like, I was like mind blown. I was like, but I captured the two stones. What are you talking about? Right? I e easy capture, right? Look at all my points. Um, doing right what you are wrong in is already many people can't, yeah, many people can't claim that. But actually doing the wrong thing the right way, which is what I did here, right? I did the wrong thing, cut these two stones in the right way, ish. Um, it, it still wasn't good. So, okay, so the computer was like, this is terrible for black. And I, I couldn't understand it. I, I was like, what? This, this is, I don't believe it, right? Um, and maybe, um, I'm gonna ask the chat, why is this bad for black? What did, what did black screw up? Uh, the cut at F9 is very bad. Yeah, yeah, I mean, my shape is wrecked on the outside. Cut at F9 is a big issue. Summit's bug... <laughs> yeah, Summit's bug report to the Leela developer, correct. Um, so, um, yeah, F9 cut. I mean, yeah, too early, but why is it too early? Aji in the corner, white has strong shapes. Well, Aji, there's not really much uh, Aji in the corner, but A, I would prefer you to press the 3-4. Well... Keep in mind that according to the AI evaluation, I lost like 20% with this sequence. White has sente, Kappa. Yeah, white has sente. White got stronger on both sides. We have some really good ideas here, right? Um, yeah, those, those are some good ideas. So let's see. 
Um, yeah, Black limited his development. That's a very chess-like way of putting it. You didn't get enough points. Um, yeah, so let's look at this position, right? First thing, white got center, right? White got center. Right, here I could, you know, at this point I can do anything I want, right? I could, uh, I could pincer on the top side, I could press on the lower side, I, I could do anything I want, right? Here, white gets sente. So, so sente is the first thing that, that black obviously lost. Um, as why I will view black going all in on the corner early on. Yeah, it's like an, it's like a very early cash grab for very little compensation. Well, sorry, no, for way too big compensation. White gets too much. The other thing that I gave is a ponuki on the outside. I mean, look at this shape, right? So previously, this shape of whites, you know, it is a strong shape, right? White's okay, but it's not, let's say, a powerhouse of strength, right? This is a powerhouse of strength for white. This, this ponuki, this shape is actually very powerful. And additionally, I really hurt my shape on the outside because I created this cutting point. And, you know, at some point in my reading, like in my convoluted like reading world, I thought I needed to make this exchange, which is probably not great, in order to pull this off. Doesn't look like that great a shape, can the blackstone still escape? The blackstone escaping isn't important. Like, this blackstone doesn't matter at all. So um, let's go over here. It almost doesn't matter whether the black stone exists or not. Or if you want to think about it I, I, in some way, you can think about it. White has this ponuki, right? And then black made this exchange, which is just bad. It's bad because it's basically giving white more strength, whereas the black stone will easily get swallowed. Like, unless I actively spend moves to save this stone, it will just passively become white's income, right? And therefore, it's just a bad exchange that I played. Uh, and other than that, I gave white a punuki. So, this is not an ideal sequence. And, and the, the reason that I played this is that at the time, I was the type of player who was like, influence doesn't matter because I can't see it, right? And this is how more aggressively minded players tend to, to, tend to think, right? You don't, I don't see your points, right? I can plausibly, like, I can plausibly, um, you know, resist your influence by playing better than you. This is how, this is how I used to think. So I look at this and I, I didn't count it as anything for white. I just thought, oh, I won three points, right? And maybe I, I would guess that a lot of players here would think that black is better because black gained a lot of points. But there's a lot of things that black didn't, you know, well, black, that black didn't get that white got that are a little bit harder to count. Like, it's hard to pinpoint the value of a ponuki, right? And it's hard to pinpoint the value of Sente. But now if I looked at this position, I'd be very sure that white has more than black. I wouldn't be sure how much more, but I'd be sure that black has more. Um, so Ponoki on the outside is really worth 30 points. I mean, not really. Black got, black got like 12 extra points and black got a Ponuki and Sente. So that, you know, um, maybe Ponuki is worth 12 points minus Sente. Um, and it's very hard to quantify ponukis and points. Um, and, and you know, it's... I am oversimplifying the position, of course, because it's not like black only got points. For example, after I do this stuff, uh, let's look at the position again. White doesn't have any endgame against my corner. White can never invade at c3 and maybe annoy me later. So, you know, I did get a little bit more, but not much more. And... Um, during the game, I think I made a really gross misjudgment because I was only considering territory, which is only one of the many currencies in Go, right? So I wasn't considering, like, now the first thing I look at when I think of this, of this position is 
the black shape on the outside is really bad and white shape on the on the outside is really good. And also the white has sent it. So yeah, there's just so many other uh, currencies in Go, right? Ways to make profit that are very like, that are a little bit harder to judge, but are often undervalued. So that that's maybe the theme here. And in this game, I, I misjudged this completely, right? Um, so yeah, that's interesting. Now, now, um, a little bit of a comparison, let's say, between that game and this one. This is another game I played. This one is, uh, I played it in 2020. Um, and I played it um, against a five done uh, in an online tournament this year. And I'm going to like basically go a little bit through the the early game, and eventually I'm going to ask you what you think of the position. So, and, and this is the type of position that I'm guessing. My guess, I, I I'd love to see this confirmed. That the um the majority of you would rather not have to play this um this position as either player, like you would not like this position as your side. But let's see, let's see what you think. So, um, you know, I'm I, I'm black, right? I play some Joseki and some Joseki. Um, this move is a little bit strange because it's playing from the F17 side, which is maybe not the biggest. Not a big deal. Um, and white makes a solid, you know, corner points. I play a solid extension. And yeah, this is the first moment where black has an interesting decision to make. Um, here I can basically decide the type of game I go for. And maybe some of you that know me know that when I can decide the type of game I go for, I go for influence. So, you know, I, I played R3, my opponent played S3, and, you know, so so S5, eh? yeah, yeah, I mean, I always play S5. I always play this Joseki. Or not always, but I play it a lot. I really play it a lot. Um... I mean, the other reason I like S5 as a Joseki is that um, I can even, even if I don't play for influence, I can still play for a running fight, and I enjoy this kind of running fight as well. My second favorite type of game. So it's a Joseki I play very often, whereas most people would connect. Looks good. Yeah, it looks good. So I played this Joseki, right? And then white... Um, no, no, not this. White Tenuki. Yeah, so White played C12. And C12 is the first move that I personally have an issue with, let's say. Like, I think is suboptimal. Um, and the reasoning is that this area is just not very big. Like, when Black has... W with these moves, I've basically announced my intention to build a framework, right? And this left lower side, which is pretty small, I don't think is important enough that white has to take away these points. Um, I mean, if white's taking away points, there are even other moves I prefer, such as, like, I don't know, you want to invade R17 or something. So, I mean, if I were white, the f like, my AI spider senses are telling me that this move or something like that is what the computer would play. Um... Okay, why invades? And you know, knowing my opponent, what my opponent is saying is that your group doesn't have a base. That's what my opponent is saying. Um, because that's how he plays. So, so I think his logic is very different to mine. My logic is this is a seven stone wall. It's unlikely to get attacked. Though I, I also understand that, you know, taking a, gr a group's base while making points can never be terrible, right? Um, I jumped G15. In retrospect, I think I should have already played some random cosmic move that the computer would approve of, <laughs> um, because this group is really not that weak. But okay, I played uh, G15, and White played H3, and then Hane at, at F2, G2, E2. I maybe some of you remember what I was talking about earlier in the lecture about this Hanein connection, and maybe you already know what I think of it. 
Um, so, okay, I tenukied, and now you can see that black has... I mean, this is my dream type of game. I have a massive moyo, I have everything I want. This game is incredibly fun for me. Right, and then um, white actually even played here. But, okay, I think this is a good moment to stop. Um, I here have exactly the type of game I want, but that's actually not the point. The point is, who do you think is better? Like, who is this game better for, in your opinion? Who has the upper hand? Uh, and you know, it's very clear that I think I have the upper hand, but you can disagree, right? In fact, the reason that this is a very interesting position to me is that my opponent, when I reviewed the game, he said he thought he was significantly better out of Fuseki. White's invasions are all in my 15Q Samago book. I see. Yeah, I'd go for black too. I see. So we have a consensus for black. Maybe it's because I've been talking about it from black's perspective and I thought I was better, but I sort of like black because white's points are all quite predictable. I see that's an interesting argument. Um, so we can talk a little bit about this position, right? Um, I have, you know, I, I basically have no points, or like, I have some points, but, um, mostly I have influence, right? White conversely has 13, 23, basically white has an over 30 point corner, a 15 point corner, and these like, you know, seven extra points, plus Comey. So black has, sorry, white has maybe 65 points already at move 47. White has lots of points. I wanted to see the whole game at this point. Oh, this game was pretty fun. Uh, it ended in a fun way. So uh, eh, I might show you briefly. So white has lots and lots of cash and black has lots and lots of influence, right? And I think many players here would struggle to evaluate this position because Black's influence is very, very hard to quantify. How many points are here? We don't know. I mean, something, right? But how much, right? And this is why this game is interesting. Here, I was convinced that I'm better, right? And my reasoning was very simple. I haven't played any bad moves. I've just played Joseki. I've answered naturally. Here, I got Sente. Here, I played a normal jump. And here I played a move that is like normal when you're playing for Moyo. So I've only played either Joseki moves or moves that I'm very sure can't be bad. Conversely, White has played C12 suspicious, uh, so, so, uh, oh, C12 invasion, which in my, in, in my opinion is suspicious. And White has played E2 connection, which I know is suspicious. I mean, this can't be good, in my opinion. It's, it's just too slow. And white needs to do something about black's influence, maybe shoulder hit here. Um, I would evaluate it only on the merit of C12, F2, and G15. Hmm, okay, I see. Yeah, so I think G15 is probably the, the a suboptimal move that I played, but it's not too bad. So I didn't mind it, let's say. I wasn't too... Um, it wasn't actively a bad move. I think it's just not optimal. Um... Okay, my reasoning was very simple. I've played good moves, and he's played not all good moves. So I should be better. His logic was, I have points. Right? His logic was just, I have more points. Uh, and this shows a little bit of a difference in mentality. And this player isn't bad, by the way. Like, he's a strong five then. He's, you know, um, by no means a bad player. And he beats me sometimes, you know? Um... And, and here, he had an evaluation that, in my opinion, is incorrect. Like, and, and this would be backed up by a computer. If you put this into a computer, black is actually quite very good for move 45. Um, I have a hard time evaluating black's potential points. On the other hand, it ain't easy to find the spot to reduce or invade for white too, at least for me. I see. So this is the interesting thing about, for example, my opponent. I think many players... Like I said, many aggressively minded players kind of look at this moyo and they're like, I can deal with it, it's fine. So basically, when there's an intangible on the board, 
more, I'm going to say, confident players assume that the, the uncertainty won't be very fruitful for their opponent. Whereas if you're not a very uh, active player, let's say, you're concerned that this intangibility will lead to you not getting much. And this is why I usually like having my currency and go in intangible. Um, yeah, I like my currency to be an intangible one, such as influence, because I'm very confident. So that, that sort of... Um, you know, I have a lot of faith in my in in my ability and my position. Um, and you know, in this situation, White also has a lot of faith in his ability. I'm going to destroy your moyo. You're not making anything. I'm leading on points. You know, so I'm better. Um, and this just shows a little bit of a, a a difference in mentality. And whereas I think my opinion here is better according to a computer. My opponent beats a lot of strong players thinking the way he does, right? And this game, he gave me a very, very hard time. Um, like, my opponent gave me a very hard time this game to win. So I did win eventually. Would you play suboptimal slash questionable moves to gain influence and feel good about it, though? Yes, yes, that's a problem of mine. Actually, it's so much of a problem of mine that the next example in this lecture is exactly about that topic. Uh, Yakago, you know, exactly about that topic. Um, this moyo is big for now. It's enough to get a square of points and be even on points with white. Well, I mean that's very hard to define. Um, it's I don't know. It's I mean which square of point where in what way? The board is just too open to be too sure of what's going to happen. That's maybe my point. Um, but yeah, I mean eight times eight. Yeah, but 8 times 8 is hard to get. Stones are good at living, dude. Uh, stones, stones are hard to kill. Um, anyway, but I'll, okay, I'll, I'll briefly show what happened in the game, which was really interesting. So I kept making influence, and White kept making points. So we kept, like, on a standoff, right? And at this point, I played this move, and it's like, oh, do you want to defend this, this cunning point and be even more over-concentrated? And White was like, no, I'll invade. And then we had a, like really 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 interesting fight uh i mean i don't want to comment it because it's not the subject of the lecture but since some people said they wanted to see the whole game um we basically started this co because i wanted to keep white's group a little bit weak and eventually um in in an even funnier turn of events white lived on the top i connected in the center white lived on the top and, th and then i tried to kill this group basically like, I tried to kill the white group, uh, and eventually it turned into a dragon, and I succeeded in killing it, and this whole thing is dead. So, the funny game. But it wasn't easy. Like, it's, it, it was a very fun game to play. I really enjoyed playing it, but it was not an easy one. Um, so yeah, this, yeah, goes fun. Um, goes fun. So, okay. Now, you know... I really want to come back to this comment that Yakako made. Would you play suboptimal slash questionable moves to gain influence and feel good about it, though? Yes. And this, you know, this is the last game that we're going to talk about. And this is why, you know, all of all this lecture, basically, I have been discussing this, this, uh, the concept of points or, and like judging points versus judging other things on the board, right? I've been discussing it from the point of view of someone who really likes influence, right? And with this game, where this is a teaching game, I played with Anti, the, you know, the, he's kind of the boss of the Nordic Dojo, he runs the website, and he's also my teacher. And this is a teaching game I played against him, where I played for influence, and I got blown out of the water. Like, I got destroyed. Like, it wasn't even funny. It was ridiculous. I've, 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 it's been years, no, not years, okay, it's been a year or two since I got crushed this hard in a serious game. So, yeah, um, yeah, so this, this'll be a fun game. Anyway, um, and the point I want to make out of this last game is that when I say that points, you know, when I say that, um, you know, points are tangible value and there are other things that have intangible value, 
what I mean by things that have intangible value, I mostly mean good shape. I don't mean influence. Because you can throw a bunch of stones on the outside and pretend that it's influence. But if they have cutting points, if they're weak everywhere, if they have problems, then they're not, they're not going to work for you, right? That's not real influence. That's fake influence, right? And the real point here is that you trade territory for shape. Like, in my opinion, the two most important uh, currencies that are going to work for you most of the time in Go, or some of the two most important currencies, are territory and good shape. Because good shape, you can very easily turn into an advantage by fighting. Uh, usually you can get better endgame. Better, you know, it, it spills over into a lot of good things. Good shape. And we've seen that in multiple examples. Now, this is an example of me making influence while not making good shape and getting completely destroyed. So... Okay, I'm black. Uh, no Komi game, by the way. We play on no Komi. Um, so, yes, I mean, so far, kind of normal. And, okay, this is, I, I, okay, I didn't play too well this game, but oh well. Um, so first thing that happens, uh, I, actually, there's some annotations this Oh, did I save the... Oh, I didn't save the game. I saved the file we reviewed on. So there's, like, lots of variations. Um, okay. So, as usual, I'm up to my business of making uh, something on the outside that I want to turn into influence, right? And this is a very common idea that White plays here. This Hane connect on the second line makes it so White's completely alive locally. Black has no center moves. And more importantly, it creates annoying problems in black's shape, right? And my move here was a little bit strange. So I figured, like, my logic during the game was the top side is getting kind of small after this Hane, so I don't want to play there. So I'm, going to, I'm going to just kind of switch my currency to the right side. That was the idea. The problem is I'm not respecting either one of these cutting points, and I'm going to regret that later. And by, I, by I'm going to regret that. I mean, I'm going to regret that a lot. Um, I'm never playing this move ever again, almost. Or I might, but uh, yeah. It's, um, where are you from? Spain. I'm from Spain. Um, so, you know, more usual moves here would be protecting either one of the cutting points, because the key thing you want to keep in mind here is that good shape is what matters. Random stones on the outside don't. What software is this? I'm using KGS, because I'm nostalgic. Um, some might call it Stockholm Syndrome, but um, anyway. So, game continues. Um, and White makes some group, and, you know, I, I think White's done a good job here of not letting me turn this outside stuff into a threatening influence. It's just cutting points that White's going to take advantage of eventually. And we're going to see that even more in a little bit. Uh, oh yeah, P P3 was a move. P3 was like, I need to fix my shape in the corner somehow. And maybe later I can play this and harass White's group. So that was the logic. But okay. So White invaded the top side, actually. And... And... This, you know, this is a very normal idea. When Black has this kind of shape, right, where White kicks, Black goes up. White can always play, or not always, but often can play G18 and threaten to either live on the top or connect on the, on the corner. Very common idea. So White lived. And... Yeah, okay. So this was... This is maybe the key moment I want to talk about at this point, right? Um, this game is a little bit similar to my last game, right, where I was black um, as well, and my opponent has lots and lots of points, and I have lots and lots of stones on the outside, right? And here I maybe ask that again, what they think of this game. Um, because this, this has a very, very different dynamic. 
to the previous game, in my opinion. There are some features that make it so that this game is maybe not as good for black as, as the previous one we were... Um, oh, no Komi. Oh, well, actually, because of no Komi, maybe black's fine here still. Maybe. Maybe. I'm not sure. Actually, this is... This position's already very, very suspicious for black. Um... Hmm. So... I think the main feature that separates those two situations is that if we look at the other game at this stage... I don't have any cutting points. I don't have any weaknesses, right? Nothing. Everything's really strong. All the shapes are good, right? Um, black had almost three walls before here. Black has one with an extension. Well, yeah, that's another reason. But on the other hand, keep in mind that in this one, I also have more points, right? I like I have a full corner instead of white. You know, white has nowhere near as many points as in the other game. So I don't need as much influence. The point is white has more points and I have more influence, right? But we need to weigh the, the, the value. I don't think the group on P6 um, looks into Black's framework. Uh, yeah, I think that the group on P6 looks into Black's framework too much. Also, I don't like the lower left group. I mean, the lower left group is kind of fine. It's very flexible, right? It has lots of ways to make shape and it has lots of ways to be used with a potential moyo. That's why I very often like playing this kind of um, high joseki. Um, I agree the shape is the more meaningful difference. Yeah, okay, sh shape is the really mean meaningful difference, which is, look at these cutting points. These are very debilitating. Um, even this is a problem, though to a lesser extent. And the, you know, what happened in, in the like ensuing sequence was that, you know, I figured... I, I knew that this was a problem. I knew that N16 is a big problem for me, but I couldn't bring myself to play here because then White's just going to play here and then it, it's really difficult for me to develop this in a good way. So I played here. And then um, a little bit later in the game, oh yeah, I even played this move, uh, which is just trying to make a... It's trying to make a moyo out of a bunch of cutting points, basically. So I don't have influence not real influence. And this is the point I wanted to stress. You don't trade territory for influence, you trade territory for shape, for the right shape. And then the right shape will turn into good stuff. And then, okay, and then white proceeded to destroy me. So let, let's start from here. I hunted, and then white cut. Um, and then white uh, plays uh, N9. And N9 is such an annoying move because N9 is telling me, well, how are you going to keep any of this? I know. You have problems everywhere. You have a problem at R11, N16, what are you doing? And yeah, I decided to double down. Oh, by the way, hello, Battle Porridge. Um, I doubled down and I played um, M M7. And maybe in this position, some of you will be a bit scared for white. Because, oh, maybe I'm going to kill these two stones and keep my center, right? Maybe. Um, maybe. Uh, except no. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, I had to double down at this point. I mean, I had to double down on my, on, on my moyo, but that's the problem. Um, so white... You know, this is... I'm going to fast forward it a bit. This is anti-specialty, by the way. Anti loves, loves making your shapes suffer. And you know, suddenly white white just used a bunch of my shape problems and makes two eyes in the center and then the game's over. And then I tried super hard, I took this eye and it's like ah ah let's suffer here and try to do something. Um and uh, I mean eventually white lived because trying to kill this is ludicrous. But yeah, I I tried. Um and the point about this game that I wanted to stress is that I was a little bit too enamored with the idea of making influence and didn't stop to make sure that my shapes 
of the right um, makeup to to actually be influenced, right? And that's a point I wanted to end on. In this game, for example, territory was much, much more valuable than what I was building, right? And that's that's just an interesting concept about um, about let's say territory. Like uh, the reason I wanted to include this game is that I wanted to present territory as like um, ah, yeah, it's an interesting point. It really does feel like we spent a lecture on judging the value of influence, which is really valuable to talk about. So the reason that we're judging the value of influence, or not just of influence, we actually. At different points, we judge the value of everything except territory. And the reason for that is that territory, you know, I don't need to teach you to count territory. Like, counting territory is one of the easiest things in Go. But the point is, people count territory and they don't evaluate anything else. So when I say judging the value of territory, it's mostly judging the value of territory relative to other things on the board and that could be influence right or it could be you know um well it could you know it could be good shape it could be this moyo that i'm getting or except i mean this moyo isn't very impressive so not really but it could be other things like end game it could be sente right sente is a really big one that people forget but when yeah when i say judging the value of 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 territory I mostly mean that you can't only judge the value of territory. That's the really important thing. How many points you have in like net points isn't important unless you consider the context of the rest of the game. When you become like well, or by how many points you're leading, let's say. So Najay asks, uh, would you be comfortable, more comfortable with N sixteen? If I played N sixteen, it's just such a loss of tempo. How I just place here and I can't do anything with my influence. It's so hard to build anything significant. Um, given it's a no Komi game, I could probably do this and then just play here and build something. And then maybe I'm not strictly speaking worse because of Komi. Like White has no Komi this game, but not a good game. Uh, you can't say territory is worth more than this other thing without knowing the value of the other thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, the point is, I'm kind of trying to give you tools to try to evaluate territory as a function of the rest of the game instead of just the net point value, right? That, that's maybe what I'm trying to encourage. Um, so when we, when we see, see some examples such as the one um, of my student, right, um, this game, where he really didn't want to lose his corner, if he had, well, I mean, it's more like here, if he had uh, properly considered um, to the fullest extent what the value of the things that he's getting in exchange for this corner would have been, then maybe he wouldn't have made uh, a decision to, to try to keep his points in a way that unfortunately really was terrible for his shape. Uh, that you don't trade points for influence, but shape is a really good point. Oh, thanks. Um, Okay, I think I'll probably um, end the lecture on this one. Actually, the lecture's been it's a, one of the longer lectures I've done, hour 33 minutes. Usually they're meant to be like 75, but you know, um, I don't know, to, I, I don't know, I felt like covering the example with Antti, so um, thanks, interesting lecture. Oh, uh, thanks for lecture. Yeah, uh, thanks for watching, people. Um, I only catch the end. Hello, Jeff. Was there a point where you could have changed your influence game to a point to make it okay for you, or were you stuck with your Moyo tactic in the game against Anti? Oh, that's an interesting question. So let's go back to it a second. Um, oh, this is just... Th these are some... No, not this one. Where are you? Okay, there you are. Um, probably... Uh, so... Browser asks when, like, maybe wh when was V1? Like, V1, like, when, when could I have stopped doing this, like, madness? Um, probably, probably at this point, I've kind of committed to playing for influence. 
But I just need to respect the fact that I need to have good shape when I play for influence and play N16. And the game is worse for me, but the game's still reasonable. So this is what I should have done to answer your question. So playing for influence will still not be terrible, but I need to make sure it's actually influence. So yeah. Thanks for the lecture, Oscar, and the NGD. Yeah, um, thank you. Okay. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, I'll, I'll end on this. And um, I guess, um, yeah, I, I, I guess that's all. Um, see you guys in two weeks. It might be me doing the lecture. It will probably be one of the other teachers. And yeah, see you, see you people next time.